In this video, we're going to paint some clouds using Corel Painter 11 and a tablet. What we'll be painting is going to end up looking pretty similar to this, so I just kind of wanted to show you it first so you get an idea of what we're going to be doing. Just some basic clouds and a little bit of hills in the background and a little bit of horizon, but we'll mainly be focusing on the technique of painting the clouds. The rest is just kind of there to contain it. So let me close this out really quick. and. Just for example's sake, I'm going to make a canvas that's 600 by 600 pixels at 72 dpi. That's probably way too small for something you're going to want to work on that you're going to use as a, a piece of finished artwork. You'd want to make something much bigger. Um, if you look at how many inches that equates to, it's only 8 by 3, so it's not going to be that big, but it does fit really nicely right here on screen without me having to zoom, so that's why I chose that size. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our paint bucket and we're going to pick a nice sky color, something about between indigo and cyan, more towards the cyan I think is what I'm feeling for my sky, and something pretty bright uh, and very saturated. Uh, and then we're going to take our paint bucket and we're going to put that in. I think that's probably a little too bright, so I'm going to back it down a little. And we're going to call that good. That'll be our base layer, and then we're going to take our airbrush. I have this saved because I use this a lot. It's the digital airbrush. It works really well, and this size is about right. And I'm going to get a darker blue, not too dark, and I'm going to shift it towards indigo a little bit. And this is going to be the top part of the sky. We're just going to kind of paint it in. This is where it would get darker at the top. And notice the opacity is very low, it's at 17. It could be even lower, it just depends on uh, how your pers own personal brush stroke is. And then we'll do something similar towards the bottom. We'll get a very light color and we'll shift it more back towards indigo. Or you could sample by holding down the Alt key, your original color, and just shift that. It still needs to go a little more towards the cyan though. And we'll go across the bottom. That would be where the sun is closer, and thusly brighter, at least in this sky. And we'll go just a little lighter for the very bottom. And then as we have pollution and other things in the air, it gives it kind of a more peachy tint towards the bottom, so I like to work a little bit of that in too. And if you go too overboard, you can just kind of get a little bit lighter of a color and put that in. Basically you want it to be darker on the top, lighter on the bottom, a pretty smooth transition all the way down. And we could blend this but we're not going to worry about it because we're really just here to focus on the clouds. So we're going to make one more layer and we're going to call it horizon. And that's going to represent the horizon line in our painting. So to paint that in the best way I've found is we're going to get a pretty dark color um, again, that similar kind of blue color, not quite black, but really dark blue-black. And then we're going to take one of the oil painting brushes, which is flat oils. It's a custom brush I made. Basically, uh, if you look in the general settings, it's set to these specific settings. It basically just makes a really hard, thick, opaque edge, which I like. Make sure the opacity is at 100%. And right about here, where it starts to get really light, towards the bottom is where our horizon is going to be, at least in my painting. And to get a straight line to go all the way across, you want to hold down shift before you start painting. That'll give you a nice perfect straight line. And I don't want it to be exactly straight, so I'm going to kind of go over it just a little bit, ever so slightly, to change it up just a little. And that works pretty good. We're going to make another layer and move it beneath the horizon layer, or behind it, and we're going to call that hills. It's going to be some distant hills. And for that, we're going to sample holding down Alt and clicking on our color there, our main color. We're going to sample that. And using our oil brush again, we're going to pick kind of a, a muted, shifted maybe a little more towards the cyan, a muted light gray, a blue-gray color. because if it's in the distance, it's going to be pretty light. 
and I think that works. And then we're going to click Preserve Transparency. That's basically going to stencil this off. It's going to only going to allow you to paint on what's opaque on this alpha channel here. So that may not make any sense. I'll just show you. So first of all, I'm going to add a little bit of darkness to the top edge of this to give it some visual interest. And then I'm going to sample right on the edge where the sky is. And I'm going to paint in on the bottom edge to kind of separate it from the horizon line. Plus, it's going to get kind of light down there anyways. Maybe a little lighter. That's pretty good. And now let's do the same thing with our horizon a little bit. I kind of want to lighten it just a little bit, so I'm going to sample some of my sky color. Preserve transparency is still selected, so it's only going to paint on that layer. It's going to paint on a little bit, and it's going to brighten it up a little bit. I think that looks a lot better. My hills could be just a little darker too on the sides. That's yeah, looking good. Okay, so now the most important part. We're going to paint some clouds. We're going to add a new layer, put it on the very top, and we're going to call it clouds. So it's good practice to name all your layers. It's even better to be in the practice of using layers, as we'll see in a minute, it can be uh, to your advantage. So we're going to take tr preserve transparency off so that we can paint, otherwise it won't let us do anything because there's no alpha channel present. And we're going to set our blend mode to screen up here in the layers palette. And we're going to take our digital airbrush. Opacity is fine at 17, but we want to change the jitter from 0 as it is by default and move it up to anywhere above 1, let's say 112, but any number above 1 is fine. And we're going to take not quite white but a very light blue, almost white, with our airbrush. A little bit smaller of a setting. And then we're just going to use circular strokes to paint in some fluffy cloud shapes. And you want these to be pretty random. You make your brush a little smaller to get some finer details. But you, do, you don't want it to be completely opaque everywhere. You want to have these intentional different variations of opacity because you're going to use that to your advantage to make it look more three-dimensional. So that's good. doesn't have to be perfect. just needs to be looking like a cloud. And now to make it look less like a cotton ball and more like a cloud, we're going to get the Blender Brush Coarse Oily Blender. This is a good brush. And we're going to set the pull to, say, 38. Anywhere around there is fine. And the opacity will pull up to 34 kind of mid-range settings and we're going to use circular strokes aiming uh, curving towards the horizon or towards the, the focal point in the center uh, the assuming the perspective point is central which it is in my painting and just kind of use rounded strokes and basically we're just trying to build up the three-dimensionality of this cloud like so and already you can start to see there's a lot of these shapes coming out, just random cloud shapes. And you can go up the opposite direction, it doesn't have to be all, all in towards the center. Essentially you want the top edge to look pretty sharp and the bottom edge is going to be pretty blended in, pretty soft. Okay, so I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller now and continue in the same fashion. It's good to try to pull some of your, your color in smudge it inward so that you pull in a little bit of the sky as well. And you can kind of build these shapes out however you want them to be. There's really no right or wrong here as long as it's uh, a white swirly shape with a lot of definition it's going to be looking good. Pull up a little bit from the bottom here. Okay. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use the next blender brush, which I like. It's called Diffuse Blur. And 38 for the strength, 21 for the grain. I usually leave it at that no matter what I'm doing. And I'm going to be very light in, in my pressure here when I'm pushing down. I'm just pushing down lightly 
So I don't want to blend it too much. I just want to blend it lightly all over everything. Just kind of get it all blurred together. But don't blur it too much. It's really just diffusing it. It's not actually blurring it so much. Okay. And once that's done, we're going to go back to our coarse oily blender, the first blender brush we used. And while the setting's still a little smaller, I'm going to use those same but tighter circles this time, more defined, to bring back some of our hard shapes, some of our hard edges. So we don't want it to be soft everywhere, we want it to have a little bit of both. And this is going to start to make it look more like a realistic cloud or a painterly realistic cloud. Same thing on the other side. You want the top edges to be pretty sharp, bottom edges not so much. So don't just go over the whole thing and sharpen it all again. You want it to be soft in some spots and coarse in other spots. You just kind of want to build it out. You don't want too many big solid white areas, so that's why I'm trying to trying to drag in some of this color. And what's interesting is, since this is set to the screen blending mode, I'm actually not even really moving color. Um, I'm essentially just smudging the white color from the clouds around. You can see I can move them if I want to. So it's a lot like working with real paint. You're you're utilizing the fact that you can put a solid, one solid white color on here and you can smudge it around to get different levels of opacity rather than, you know, go through and just keep picking from different colors from your palette, different colors of blue and trying to mix them in. This is just, for me, this is just way more efficient and it's more practical. Um, it's more like traditional painting would be, or at least the techniques I've observed for painting clouds. So that's a lot how this that's a lot of how this is developed for me and how I develop a lot of my techniques is based on practicality. I don't want to I don't want to spend 4 hours painting clouds when I can do it in, you know, 10 minutes or less. It's taken taking me a little longer to do this as an example. Um, once you get the hang of this, you could do this really quickly. So I'm going to go back to my blender diffuse blur brush again and just lightly soften up a little bit of those edges, but not everywhere. Just kind of lightly go over it once. And I think that's looking pretty good. And you're going to soften it a little bit more in some of these places with too, too jagged of detail. It needs to be softened. And it's really up to you to decide how you want it to look. spend forever on this and let's see so one of the last things we could do just to kind of make it more visually interesting is put a vignette on it so we'll make a new layer and we'll do something similar in the blend modes except we'll set it to multiply which is the opposite of screen it's only going to let dark colors go through and we're going to name it vignette and we're going to take our airbrush digital airbrush and we're going to pick almost black kind of blue big brush size, so opacity is very low. And oops, we have it set to jitter. We want to take the jitter all the way down to zero. And now that brush is functioning as it should. And basically I'm just going to darken these edges. And I'm going to go a little overboard here because I'm going to pull it back. So it may be a little too much. And so you can see now that if we have our blend mode set to multiply, it's only allowing the dark to show through. That if we set our brush to white, it's going to basically work like an eraser and paint out some of that vignette. And you can see if I set the blend mode back to normal default, you can see that white and the black that I painted in. So it's a good way to work back and forth. You could do the same thing with the clouds. You could uh, go into the clouds layer since it's set to screen and you could take black or a dark blue color and you could paint in some shadows some darker areas on the clouds if you wanted to and that might even look good and you know you could even 
go through and sharpen up that edge and so that's very handy. It's a good thing to get used to using these blend modes for um, areas where you can utilize them um, on individual layers to your advantage, especially for lightening and darkening and highlights and midtones and texture. Don't be afraid to use a lot of layers. In my more elaborate paintings, I might use 30, 60 layers, you know, even more than that. I really don't even want to count how many layers I use for my own sanity. Um, so let's go back to our vignette layer and let's knock that down. It's a little too dark. I want it to be, I don't know, maybe more like that. And let's just call that good. Uh, you get a good idea of how we did that. Um, we mainly just plopped down some white color with our clouds layer set to screen. It was helpful to use your digital airbrush, set it to jitter so that it gets you the more uh, fluffy, cottony, random shapes. And then we used our coarse oily blender to build up the cloud shapes. And then we diffused it, or blurred it a little bit, softened it, if you will, with our diffuse blur brush. And we have a nice looking cloud background that you could apply to just about any painting.